I didn't think you guys would get to me today. Well, um, uh, I wanted to, to talk to somebody from Flint. Oh, well, good. Hold on a second. Let me check the speakerphone here. Okay. Um, so um, I, I wanted to first correct the uh, the 8,000 kids thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's I will say that's actually um, something that's gotten overblown a little bit. It's either worse or less we actually the problem is we actually don't know what what the 8,000 children's number is is exposure so they're saying 8,000 is exposed to lead in the water we really have no idea because we haven't had widespread testing right and uh fair enough you know there's been a lot of cover up so there is that and I just I hear that number and I'm just like oh my god I can't I can't listen to that <laughs> it's something that hurt to be because it's not technically true. Right, okay, fair enough. As for, yeah, as as for Ash's statements, like, I, I, I really love this, this painting of, of Flynn as this, like, destitute wasteland um, where we just spent all this money and we did this and that. We, we've had a couple of bad mayors, yes. Uh, Walling was on the better side, and we, we actually had a city plan for the first time in decades. And it was actually working before the financial manager came over and basically closed down half the city's schools um, and then did, of course, the water switch. And that was the first uh, emergency manager, Ed Kurtz. And Darnell Early was the one who, who uh, headed Flint during the, uh, during the time when the water crisis basically hit. This was after the switch. But, of course, this is all headed by... Snyder right. and his, uh, his cronies. But to, to paint Flint as the city that just spent a bunch of money and didn't back it up with anything, what we did was we actually spent a bunch of money on downtown to build new dorms for U of M, uh, University of Michigan Flint. We built a uh, satellite campus for uh, Michigan State University uh, for the health uh, care professions. We built a whole new farmer's market. Um, several businesses had been revamped downtown. Uh, we rebuilt a bunch of dilapidated buildings on uh, Saginaw Street to uh, become lofts, high-end lofts, low-end lofts, whatever. They're beautiful. I wish, I wish I could live there. My wife's been wanting to live in one of them for a long time. We rebuilt uh, downtown Flint with all that money. And it was attracting people to come here. And it was working. And then the emergency manager came in. And the water thing has now damaged all those businesses that have opened. They have to advertise that the water is filtered. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my favorite restaurants to go to is called 501 Bar. Um, I heard it from a friend who knows the owner. They actually have to physically walk out, even though they have a reverse osmosis machine in their basement, they have to walk out and physically pour a bottle of water into uh, customers' cups in order for them to feel at ease drinking right. water. Right. They have to advertise out front that their water is filtered. There's a rallies down the road, which you probably know it as checkers, but it's rallies up here um, that advertises on... Uh, Saginaw and uh, Fifth Avenue that advertises filtered water. IVC filters. I mean, this is the reality of the situation. We were coming back. We could all feel it. Crime had dropped. Um, And it was was ridiculous. And, you know, my cousin, a uh, city planner for the city, he's been there for a little over a year now. And he told me that one of the other things that they did was they gutted, you know, Darnell Early gutted all of the uh, the staff at City Hall. Right. My cousin is literally, what he says is, he's like, half of me is the entire Parks Department for all of the city of Flint. And we used to have beautiful parks. And he, he's doing all he can. But, you know, he's like, it's, he, he, hates his job and he's coming from St. Paul, Minnesota, which if you know anything about St. Paul, 
it's a you know liberal haven. It's a wonderful right, place. Right, right. He's not used it's to be just, working under those type of circumstances. Well, I mean, it's 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 horrible. I mean, it's 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 absolutely horrible. I mean, yeah, I, I I just don't understand. I mean, at this point, honestly, like I, I just this is when the federal government has to step in, right? I mean, this is. This is when the federal government has to step in. I mean, what's happening here is just, uh, it's just, it, it's, it's just shocking. It's shocking. That, that's the worst part. What do you do? There's no, there's no I recourse mean, for you. Do. Yeah, I mean, there's no, no recourse there for the citizens of Flint. Every single citizen of Flint could, g- could gather in an area and, and pledge to do X, Y, or Z, and it would mean absolutely nothing. They have no ability yeah. to have any authority exactly. whatsoever. And the idea, the idea that the first people who are not, who are not like, who are not protesting this are the, all the conservatives we have heard for years and years about local control. I mean, this is just absurd. It is just beyond the pale. I, I, I don't understand how there, this has not been challenged on a federal level. I, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand how this is constitutional in any way. Um, it, it, it's, just, it's just shocking. What do, what do they do, though? What do they do, though? This is how big of a mess up it is. You know, it, this is going to be a problem for decades because what are they going to do? They're going to rebuild all the pipes in the entire city for 90,000 people? Right. What are they going to do in the meantime? How do people get water while their pipes are being rebuilt, while the water is shut off? What do they do? We can't bathe in bottled water. And even then, you know, we've got the, what, what I can see is the next crisis is, yeah, we're getting all this donated water, and it's wonderful. It's awesome. I appreciate everyone doing it. You know, on behalf of Flint, speaking to the majority of people, I appreciate it. I pick up a case every other day, and where does it, where do those bottles go? That's the next crisis. We're going to be land basted with uh, with bottled water, or, you know, bottles everywhere, plastic bottles. Right. You know, because unfortunately, you know, recycling isn't uh, held highly here. The uh, we have a uh, private. This was another thing we really did. Uh, we have a private uh, trash pickup. Uh, it's called Republic, and they pick up recycling every other week. Well, they're going to have to start coming every week. It's you know, we just, you know, we haven't gone out. Me and my wife haven't gone out and gotten a recycle bin yet. Um, we've only we moved back to the city about a month ago, but I mean, we I've lived in the area my whole life, but we've just been throwing out the bottles because I mean, we can't. You can't just keep on to, you know, holding on right. to them. We're trying to get out there to pick up a recycling. Well, but that'll be the next crisis. We're overrun with plastic bottles. Well, Mark, you watch. I, I don't <laughs> doubt it. I don't doubt it. And I, I would imagine there's going to be other problems, too, that, that we can't even contemplate at this oh, point. Oh, God, yes. I mean, uh, you know, the, yeah. the idea of, uh, of, of clean drinking and bathing water i mean just the uh, hygienic uh, the hygiene issues i mean it's going to be it's going to be a real problem um mark yeah. I, and I, I, I know you guys got to get going and I'll, I'll keep calling in and let you guys know how everything's going on the ground from here on out i appreciate it uh mark thanks so much for the no call problem at all thanks hang thanks in there for buddy. talking about the story hang in there we're thinking about you all right bye-bye just just horrible just horrible